What a friggin' night indeed. Look, we gotta talk. I wasn't even planning on making a video tonight, but we gotta talk. God damn, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Man, man, man. Now, I know we usually have a procedure anytime we do something like this, but I am throwing the procedure completely out of the damn window. Let me turn this off for WWE sues me or some shit like that. Okay, so yeah, I'm turning the uh, throwing the procedure completely out of the window. First and foremost, we absolutely have to discuss the NXT Women's Championship match. Oh my god. Bailey versus Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks went in as a defending champion, but out comes Bailey in, I kid you not, one of the greatest moments in professional wrestling that I have ever experienced as a fan. I posted on Twitter after the match was over that I felt like crying. Because that's how big that moment was, like the drama, the intrigue, the suspense, even some scary, very tense moments in that match between Bailey and Sasha Banks. And I posted on Twitter, I swear to God, I feel like crying right now because of the awesomeness that they just displayed in the ring. And that match was just about as close to perfection as you could possibly get in wrestling. So at the point where I said I felt like crying, that's right after Bailey won the championship. Then, Charlotte comes out. Then, Becky Lynch comes out. Then, Sasha Banks gets into the ring, and they all pose, and they all revel in the adoration that the crowd was just pouring upon them. And speaking of pouring, I went from feeling like crying to I don't give a damn who has anything to say about it. Me, I'm admitting right here, I shed tears over that damn match and that damn moment. That was all about, you want to talk about a women's revolution, divas revolution in WWE? I'm reminded of an old phrase, don't talk about it, be about it. And they were about that life in that damn match. It was just so amazing. And one of those tense moments that I was talking about in the match was when, I guess Bailey was kind of like going for, for a hurricanrana from the top rope onto uh, Sasha Banks. And she kind of got pushed off and she flipped around and it's like she landed on her neck she landed very awkwardly and you can tell from that point on she was struggling to be in the match and that goes beyond simply selling you could tell she was really hurt by that it looked like she got her bell rung but as crazy as it sounds it all played into what happened and you could see the agony you could just see her craving a win and the way that this storyline was set up going into this match i absolutely loved it because once again, don't talk about it, be about it. We're not preaching about equality here. We have these two ladies here who have well-defined characters that aren't, you know, um, relegated to petty BS. They're actually able to go into the ring and tell stories. And before they even get into the ring, they have those characters. You have Sasha Banks. She's supremely confident. She comes out in, I think it was like a Cadillac Escalade with her entourage and all of this stuff. And she's basically using the confidence that she has in her character to take advantage of the insecurities that Bailey has. Ba Bailey is not this supremely confident person, but she's a very inspirational figure and she wants you know, quiet girls like her to be inspired to go out there and live their dreams and things like that. And that's something that Sasha Banks looks at and says, that's something that I can exploit. And that's what I'm going to do to get a victory. But she didn't get help. She got a fucking victory in this match. I don't care what anyone says. Sasha Banks won. Bailey won. As a fan, I won. We all won. And <sighs> so here's the thing. I always try to... um tone down what I say because every single time I watch an NXT Women's Championship match, it's always better than the last one. And I thought the last one was the greatest women's match I've ever seen. So I always try to tamper down, you know, my opinions until I watch the match for a second time, but I don't give a damn right now. I am caught up in the emotion. That match was truly awesome and one of the greatest matches I've ever seen, male or female. And you will be hearing more about that match as the year rolls on. Um... Wow. Okay, I guess we can go ahead and jump into um, the, the the lineup for the show. This was NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. This was the biggest crowd by far in NXT history. And I have to say that 
I guess you'll find out at the end of the show if, if it lived up to it, as if you don't already know what's going through my mind right now. But we th started off this show with Jushin Thunder Liger versus Tyler Breeze. That was the opening for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. And it was very surreal seeing uh, Thunder Liger in a WWE ring. And not just him in a WWE ring, but them acknowledging the awesomeness and the legend that he is and how he's done all of these things one Dozens of championships and promotions all around the world. And one thing that he has yet to do was compete in a WWE ring. And the fact that he did that tonight, it was very surreal to see that. And knowing WWE and the way that they act like, or they try to act like, they're the only <laughs> promotion that exists in the world. Like, they'll acknowledge WCW and ECW because they kicked their asses and now they're, <laughs> they're intellectual property. But the fact that they did that with him and they talked up the importance of his career even though not a shred of it happened under their banner that was awesome and that built up a lot of intrigue for this match and going into the show it was a very solid match we got to see some nice spots from uh liger to see why he is highly regarded as a legend and tyler breeze i think that he did definitely rise to the occasion i remember when i initially started watching nxt i looked at tyler breeze and i was like who is this friggin' joke like this guy, we're uh, what the hell is this? But as time rolled on and he moved up towards the um, NXT championship picture, and I believe they had like a fatal four-way at one of the uh, NXT specials, his performance in that match and him actually lit rising to the occasion anytime he got into a match and showing that he's not just a guy who's going to go out there and be uh, all prancy and pretty and things like that. Like, hell, he can be that too. But when he gets into the ring and he has to flip that switch on, then... The guy turns it up, and he is a very solid in-ring competitor. And when you bring all of those things together, his great character, the legend of Jushin Thunder Liger, this was a really good opening contest for the show, and it got it started off on a right note. Now we move on to the second match of the night, which was the NXT Tag Team Championship match. The Vault Villains going in as the challengers versus Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy. Now, these are two teams that I really didn't care about, to be quite honest, but the way in which this story was told in the feud leading into this match, it got me to the point where I really cared about these two teams. And I love the way that Alexa Bliss has been incorporated into this storyline and the fact that she was like a big part of this storyline. And it was all about what can we do to neutralize her because she's so important that she would be the deciding factor in whether we win these titles or we lose. And I I don't know why, I don't know how this whole thing with Alexa Bliss worked. Yeah, we actually had Rick, aka ENC98 on Twitter. He's also a columnist for PWFEmpire.com. He posted, uh, Alexa Bliss has really come into her own since turning heel. Still don't get this blue pants thing though, LOL. See, blue pants, it's I think the, the, the thing is, she was initially just a jobber. It wasn't even supposed to be anything big, but the, she just caught on with the crowd, and that's the story. Like, she was supposed to be some no-name jobber that just came in and lost to the important people, but the crowd started to like her. It became a thing, and that's pretty much it. That's as simple as it is. And then he also tweeted, adding Alexa Bliss to Blake and Murphy is the best thing that ever happened to that team. I have to say, like, I don't know how the hell it worked, but it just did and the way that everything played out with her attempting to jump into the match and then blue pants coming in and serving in her role and neutralizing her that all turned out great and i went from not really caring about both of these teams a few weeks ago to um watching this match and being invested in it and really liking the product that they all put together and that's simon gotch there He's a very um, quirky individual. Hell, uh, Aiden English is too, but I really looked at Simon Gotch and his in-ring style. He has a very um, eccentric in-ring style, something that you don't see uh, too often in WWE, and that's a nice touch, and it proved wonders for them in this match that I really enjoyed. So next up, we have the Perfect 10, Ty Dillinger versus... Apollo Crews, this was his very first match in WWE under the NXT banner, and he was previously known as Uha Nation. Now, the thing about this guy is I've heard some things about him. I've heard that, you know, this guy, when he comes into NXT, he's going to shake it at its foundation, and I've heard really good things about him. I've never seen a complete match of his. I did go to YouTube, and I saw a video. It was like the 50 top moves or whatever the freaking number was, like the blank top moves of Uha Nation, and I watched it, and I was like, okay, this guy has something, but you know, that's how much can you really tell about 
the talent level of someone by just looking at a highlights package. Like I saw he had the highlights and things like that, but it's a completely different thing watching a highlight package where they specifically cut moments for you to look your absolute best versus seeing a complete match from start to finish. So this was my first official match that I've seen of his. And I have to say that I had high expectations of him from the highlight package that I saw on YouTube and he lived up to those expectations. He is a dangerous combination of strength and agility and when you have those two things working in tandem man you are going to be a force to be reckoned with and i have to give props to ty dillinger as well he doesn't get a lot of credit because he's one of those utility guys he's the type of guy he's solid enough that you can put him into the ring with somebody that you want to look good and that guy is going to get get in there and he's going to deliver a really good match and he's a very consistent performer and like i said he doesn't get the credit that he deserves but in this match he was good, but that damn Apollo Crews, man, I cannot wait to see what he amounts to in WWE. And maybe, uh, I don't know, because, you know, WWE, they kind of have like a, a, a reputation, you know. So I don't, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. But I'll say on his very first night in the company, some uh, great stuff. That standing moonsault that he did to end the match, awesome. Like the athleticism that he had on display in this match. I was just sitting there like, wow. And he's one of those people, he'll wow you with something and then move on to the next spot and it wows you too. So you're just sitting there for the whole match going, wow, 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 wow. So if this is any indication of what he's going to be in NXT, then we just witnessed the starts of a very promising career. Next up, we have Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin. Um, once again, I'm going to go ahead and give the NXT team props on putting together this specific matchup between these two people because Baron Corbin, he is a very special individual. He's he, he he's special. He requires a little bit more attention than some of the other big name guys in um, NXT because you have people like Finn Balor, you have people like... Um, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, then you also had uh, Neville down in NXT. These are guys who've traveled the world. They're well known on the indie scene and things like that. And they're the type of guys you can put into any situation. And right off the bat, they are going to succeed. They're going to do some awesome stuff. But Baron Corbin, it's one of those types of guys that he requires a little bit more attention. You have to put him into specific situations. And there's this uh, phrase that they use in the military, set yourself up for success. You have to put him in situations that sets him up for success. And with that being said, this was one of those situations. And I thought that this was kind of like a really great evolution from the last Baron Corbin match that I really, really, really enjoyed. And that was him versus Rhino at one of the recent NXT specials. And the reason why that match was so good is because you had somebody who has hard hitting action. This guy is a friggin' brawler and Rhino and he's going to get into the ring and he's going to physically challenge Baron Corbin. And it also brings out that brawling nature of Baron Corbin too. And this takes it into an even greater level, adding Samoa Joe as his opponent because Samoa Joe screams credibility, screams legitimacy. And the fact that you had Baron Corbin in the middle of the ring trading blows with someone of the stature of Samoa Joe, that does wonders for him. Even though he lost this match, he actually passed out to the Coquina Clutch. Like, he lost. But without a shadow of doubt in my mind, Baron Corbin comes out of this match in a better standing than he did was going into this match and just a little bit more on baron corbin i really love the character that he has right now i think that wwe this is a, a nxc nxc they really have their fingers on the pulse of what's going on because rather than you know putting on blinders and just pushing baron corbin forward on the note that you want him to go they are listening to the audience and they are playing into the same feeling that they have on Baron Corbin because I compared him to all of the guys like uh, Sami Zayn and um, Kevin Owens and things like that. He is the type of guy who's going to go in there and say, okay, you have all of these people who were world famous for wrestling and things. How come I don't know who the hell they are? You know, I don't come here to pay dudes. I come here to get paid. And that type of character, that's striking the right note for someone like Baron Corbin and it makes him the anti-NXT superstar in a sense so i think that that was great and yeah i'm sitting here talking all about baron corbin even though he lost the match so that just goes to show what great of an outing that he had here but uh samoa joe like man you want to talk about dangerous combination of strength and agility that dude man it's so great and it's still weird to see him in nxt under the wwe banner but that guy um 
they've been making a little a few missteps with him i think that's the type of guy you only need to bring him on tv when he's doing something important and this nxt takeover brooklyn match that was very important and it was a great utilization of samoa joe in this sense i already talked about um bailey versus sasha banks but should i go ahead and talk about it again freaking awesome match wow that oh my god that experience man that is something that i will never forget never then we have the main event of finn balor versus Kevin Owens. Now, this match, <laughs> it, it had a great freaking hill to climb. Man, because Bailey versus Sasha Banks, it set the freaking bar. And I don't know, like, I'm not, this match didn't, you know, it didn't like blow Bailey versus Sasha Banks out of the water, but shit, that's okay. Like, that's no biggie there in any way, shape, or form. Like, yeah. Some people could look at it as if their objective was to go out there and be the best match on the show. I say their objective was to be a freaking awesome match. And that's what it was. Like, there are a few moments in this match that I really enjoyed. Um, Kevin Owens trapping Finn Balor between the ladder and the uh, edge of the ring. Like, he set up the ladder on the uh, edge of the ring and Finn Balor was trapped in between. And Kevin Owens backs up and he's, like, rearing to go. I'm thinking, okay, what the hell is this guy going to do? Is he going to, like, run up the ladder and just charge right at Finn Balor or something like that? He runs towards Finn Balor, stops, and just pops him. <laughs> and it was so freaking funny because that is something I can perfectly see from a guy like Kevin Owens. Because he's like, I don't want to wow you. Like, I just want to get in here and I want to beat some ass. I want to hurt him and I want to win. And, <laughs> man, I freaking love his character. I really do. Um, And speaking of loving characters... Finn Balor, him bringing out the demon at uh, TakeOver. I just love the whole story behind that as if it's his dark passenger and he uses that to intimidate his opponents and not just intimidate his opponents because I've seen that special that WWE aired on um, the network, the uh, Rise of the Demon, I think that's what it's called. And, you know, it's kind of like a two-tiered thing because he uses that to intimidate his opponents and simultaneously he uses it to bring something else out of itself because i looked at him and he seems like a very um quiet type guy maybe even a little bit introverted and he uses that whole demon thing he um he uses that to bring the personality out of himself to do what's necessary to cross that line over into victory and just that type of character development is why nxt is so friggin refreshing the fact that they take the time to add all of those things to the characters and the way that it all plays out in the way that it, you could see it being reflected in the match. So this isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, well, we're going to tell you a story. And then when it actually gets to the match, it's going to be BS. But we're going to continue lying to you and telling you that you see this when in all actuality, it's not present at all. I mean, this isn't one of those cases. And another thing that uh, was really exciting about this match, it, it was kind of a little fun moment. The crowd is chanting, we want tables and <laughs> finn is in the ring completely no selling the fucking chant he's setting up the ladder trying to get to the championship and i can just imagine him going okay you got you guys want tables i want to keep my damn championship can i climb a table to get to my title no okay then glad we can reach that point of understanding so yeah <laughs> no tables in the match i guess we did have a table a little bit it was the announcer's table that um Played into the match a little bit, so I guess the crowd got what they wanted, a, just a smidge. We had Kevin Owens tossing Finn Balor over the table, then um, Finn Balor running over the table and charging at Kevin Owens, dropkicking him with the uh, ladder. A lot of great spots in this match, and at the end of the day, I will say that Sasha Banks, Bailey Lynch, uh, did I say Bailey Lynch? Sasha Banks, and she it's just this weird thing, like, she doesn't have a last name, so I just i just gave her a last name. Her and Becky Lynch, they're sisters, sisters from another mister, so there we go. Sasha Banks and Bailey, I can't even say they stole the show. The show was theirs. You know, you can't steal something that already belonged to you. Um, all of these uh, last few NXT TakeOver specials I've seen, the women's match has been the best one on the friggin' show, and this just continues the trend. So, once again, they did not steal the show. It was already theirs. But that takes nothing whatsoever away from Finn Balor and Kevin Owens because they put on a, an awesome, 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 awesome 
contest and we have Finn Balor who uh, went up to the top of the ladder. He hits Kevin Owens with a coup de gras. He climbs back up to the top of the ladder, captures his championship. So we got two title changes on this show. Vaught Villains, new tag team champions. We have Bayley as the new NXT Women's Champion and Finn Balor retaining his title. So he is still your NXT Champion. This show Man, I was going into this thinking that maybe they would be affected a little bit by the um, deflections from NXT to the main roster. But I have to say, when everything was said and done, god damn, this show was awesome. This has to be probably, um, not even probably, I'd say definitely the um, best NXT uh, special I've seen. And that is the greatest of compliments i want to go to um a comment from jonah on uh, twitter is this not the most perfect nxt show yet i've loved every single match so far i can't say that about the other shows yeah that is something that plays into this show being so awesome because you got a little something out of in a whole hell of a lot of something out of some of the matches but you know you, you got some entertainment out of every single match on this show and i would just like to say um no shade but shade um, you had a double main event here, uh, no interference in any of the matches, and I think that that's wonderful, because in NXT, you can see that they see something special in build-up and payoff, and that seems very simple. You know, you build up a match, you tell a story, and then you give the audience a payoff to the story that you told. Seems very simple, right? Remember I said that. Um, we'll see. We shall see. Double main event. No BS. No fuckery. Get in there. Have the competitors deliver a match. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. And what that all added up to was a friggin' awesome, 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 awesome show. So we'll see how um, things go. I don't even want to mention anything else, but y'all know what I'm talking about, all right? So uh, that's it for my WWE NXT TakeOver Brooklyn special, one of the best shows of the friggin' year with one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. And I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in, and we will catch you tomorrow on our PWF Empire Live post-show review of SummerSlam. Until then... Peace out.